Hey folks, welcome back to Combo Class. I'm Demotro, and today I'd like to tell you about one of my favorite sentences, which is, this statement is false. This sort of sentence has a very interesting trait. If this were true, it would mean that it's false, and if this were false, it would be false that it's false, which would mean it's true. So this sort of sentence can't be true or can't be false without leading to a paradoxical loop that breaks our assumptions about how true and false usually work. So today, I wanted to dive into this weird sentence, it's paradoxical friends, and some mathematical attempts to fix them. This is known as the liar paradox, and we could also phrase this sort of paradox as questions that are impossible to accurately answer yes or no to. Like the question, is the answer to this question no? You can't answer yes or no to that question without being wrong in either circumstance. And that's sort of like a question version of the liar paradox. Similarly, the other paradoxes I'll cover today could be phrased in the form of questions, but I'll phrase them more in the form of statements, as well as in the form of a certain type of puzzle. These paradoxical statements can be conveyed in a few ways, and along with typical sentences that we're going to try to assign values of true or false to, I'd also like to present these paradoxes through some logic puzzles that sort of encode them. This sort of logic puzzle is known as knight and knave puzzles, a term coined by the logician Raymond Smullyan, one of my favorite authors. In this sort of puzzle, imagine visiting an island where every inhabitant there is either a knight or a knave, and the knights only speak statements that are true, while the knaves only speak statements that are false. And it doesn't really matter whether we imagine that the knaves were getting something wrong or trying to trick us by lying. Regardless, the knaves only speak statements that are incorrect. For example, let's say that there were two inhabitants here, and one of them said, we are the same type, meaning they were either both knights or both knaves. Well, we can imagine that if they were a knight, that would be true, and the other person would also be a knight, and if they were a knave, it would be false, meaning they were different types, and the other person would be a knight again. So we can solve this puzzle by saying that we don't know what type the person who spoke is, but we know that the other person must be a knight. Now, I would love to go on a long tangent about my history with these puzzles, mathematical ways of solving them, trickier variations of them, and so on, but I'll save that for a future episode or maybe video on my bonus channel, because today we're not really looking at how to solve one of these puzzles, but rather which puzzles would be impossible. For example, one of these puzzles can never contain an inhabitant that says the sentence, I am a knave. If this person was a knight, they couldn't make this statement because a knight would make a true statement and this would be false. And if this person was a knave, this would be a knave making a true statement. So in either circumstance, if we try to assign knight or knave to this inhabitant, it forces the other to also be true, which is a contradiction of the rules of the puzzle. And this circumstance that's like an unsolvable puzzle is basically encoding the liar paradox of this statement is false. And we can also encode this through solvable meta-puzzles, puzzles within puzzles. Let's say that someone on this island described to you that someone else on this island had said, I am a knave. 
To solve this meta puzzle, we can note that the inner scenario of someone saying I am a knave is impossible and couldn't have happened, so the outer person who told us that must be a knave. So if we ask what other sorts of puzzles in puzzles would guarantee that the outer person was a knave because the inner situation was impossible, that's like looking for variations of the liar paradox. As a kid, I wondered what it was about some statements or night knave scenarios that were so paradoxical. And one thing I realized is that part of what makes I am a knave so weird is that the person is referring to themselves. Sometimes that doesn't cause a paradox, like if someone says, I am a knight, you can't draw any good conclusions from that. They could be a knight or a knave, but it's not paradoxical. But sometimes when someone refers to themselves, it seemed that this paradox emerges. So I wondered, are there situations that are similar, but don't involve anyone talking about themselves? How about this circumstance? We have two inhabitants of this island where one of them says the other is a knight and that other says the first one is a knave. If this one is a knight, then that person has to be a knight, but then that person has to be a knave, which is impossible. But if this person was a knave, that person isn't a knight, they're a knave, meaning it's a false statement that that one's a knave, and that doesn't work either. This is basically encoding a paradox known as the card paradox. Imagine a card where on one side it says, the sentence on the other side is true, and on the other side it says, the sentence on the other side is false. There's no way of assigning true or false to those statements without a paradox. But like the liar paradox, many logicians believe that this actually is self-referential. These statements refer back to themselves in a circular way. Like if you describe something else that describes you, aren't you sort of describing yourself in some way? And there are many sets of sentences you could create that would cause a similar paradox. But in all the typical cases, there's some sort of self-referential loop or another. But could we come up with some circumstance that was paradoxical in this way and didn't involve a self-referential loop? Well, if we bring infinity into the mix, we can create a situation that is paradoxical, but arguably doesn't contain any self-referential statements, even including a self-referential loop like in the card paradox. This one I'm going to describe as statements, but like the other paradoxes, you could turn this into a knight and knave puzzle as well. In this paradox, imagine an infinite list of statements statements, and each statement says that all the statements after it on the list are false. For any given statement, if it were true, then all the statements after it are false, meaning that the statement directly after it, which refers to all the statements after itself, should also be true, but it's one of the ones we said had to be false. And there isn't any way that a single one of these statements we encounter could be true, yet if all of them are false, it doesn't work either. Each of them being false implies that somewhere on the list is a true statement. And some mathematicians think that this is a paradox that avoids self-reference, although other mathematicians think there is self-reference still hidden within it. There are some mathematicians that think that the liar paradox isn't a paradox at all. They argue that any statement that normally just says so-and-so really says this statement is true and so-and-so. Like every statement secretly has a this statement is true and in front of it. And that would mean that this statement is false is really saying this statement 
statement is true and this statement is false, which we can clearly assign false to without a paradox. But many mathematicians don't believe that argument and think that statements don't automatically have a this statement is true and stuck in front of them. Now, there's not a clear consensus among all logicians and mathematicians about why these paradoxes emerge. But in any case, they do exist, and they do have wide ramifications throughout math, logic, language, philosophy, and more. One implication is that in logic systems that only contain two truth values, true and false, you can create statements based on the liar paradox to seemingly prove anything. Like if there's a statement that says this statement is false and so and so, it can't be true, but it can seemingly be false without a paradox as long as the so and so part is also false. But if I try to assign true or false to the statement, this statement is false and 2 plus 2 equals 4, it seems like that proves 2 plus 2 can't equal 4. Some systems of logic try to fix paradoxes like this by introducing other truth values you could assign to a statement apart from just true or false. Perhaps there's more like four possible truth values a statement could have. For example, a statement like 2 plus 2 equals 5 could be false and could not be true, and a statement like 2 plus 2 equals 4 could be true and could not be false, and perhaps you've considered the category of things that could be true or could be false, like this statement is true, but what about the category of things that can't be true and can't be false, like this statement is false? There's even a type of logic called fuzzy logic, where statements can have a truth value of zero, one, or any number in between those. And here are some notes about how within that type of logic, you can show that the truth value of the statement, this statement is false, is one half. But there are other types of logic that define it in different ways. Overall, I hope this helped you understand why sentences like this are so interesting to me. Perhaps in a future episode I'll go deeper into this topic as I explain more about the land of logic, but that's probably enough for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned some interesting things. And special thanks to the people who help make my videos possible, such as my Patreon supporters and YouTube members on my bonus Dumotro channel. And thank you all for watching. I'll see you again in the next episode soon.